begin the first session of today's conference. The first session will be led by Professor Tomo Ku from Songkinguan University. I'm going to hand over the floor to him. Please welcome him with a warm hand. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Tomo Ku. I'm, I'm teaching uh, at Songkinguan University. I'm a sociologist. Uh, this is actually my third time to be here and to moderate uh, this wonderful um, at the Young Leaders Conference. So I'm, I'm so happy about uh, having this uh, opportunity one more time uh, with uh, Professor Zhong jae -Gwan. And uh, uh, to begin with, um, I should say that, you know, I need to go to New York tonight. <laughs> so I should get on the flight uh, at uh, 7.30. So after I finish my uh, moderation, after the first session, I need to uh, rush uh, to the airport. So uh, I won't be able to see you um, and say hi and get to learn about uh, each other uh, after the session. That's really what really disappoints me. So uh, sorry about that, but I'm, I think that we'll have uh, the other opportunities to get to learn about each other. Um, you know, the theme for this, uh, today, this year's conference is, uh, is mainly about um, conflict. and. As you know, you know, conflict is everywhere, and especially when uh, we're noting uh, the increasing gap between the top and the bottom, and uh, when the South Korea is increasingly hooked up with the larger world uh, in the name of globalization. And as you know, uh, conflict has different forms, many different forms, like um, you know, the, the conflict between like uh, labor and workers, and then. Um, uh, you know, the mass mobilizations, as we can note, um, uh, in the case of the Arab Spring, and um, um, ethnic conflicts, um, and so on and so forth. And um, so because of that, I think it's really timely to, uh, you know, examine the issue of conflict, and how, under what conditions conflict uh, can be uh, perceived um, better than a uh, corporation. Well, to be honest with you, uh, when I uh, first like got to learn about the theme of this year's conference, uh, which is about uh, conflict, my reaction was like, what? <laughs> Under what conditions conflict is better than cooperation? That was really a um, hard um, agenda, uh, especially uh, even to me as a professor. Uh, I, I, I guess like Professor Chung might have felt the same way. Maybe not, I don't know. <laughs> But um, the more I think about it, the, uh, the more I realize that you know, you know, conflict is the topic is really um, uh, relevant to um, understanding you know contemporary society in our uh, uh, the world. The scope of the papers that will be presented for today is uh, as broad as you can imagine. Um, as I said a little bit. Um, uh, on one hand, uh, we have um, you know uh, papers um, lined up to examine. Uh, forms of social uh, conflicts uh, at the global level, uh, which is uh, we were presented um, uh, at the second session. And on the other hand, we have um, some papers that will examine forms of conflicts that uh, emerge at the local level, at the national level. Um, so I'm in charge of the, the first session that will examine the domestic uh, forms of conflict, uh, uh, for example, uh, the mass mobilization and the controversies surrounding uh, nuclear power plant. Um, as well as um, you know, uh, many different forms of social conflict we've seen over the last uh, couple decades in South Korea. So I'm very much looking forward to hearing from uh, the presenters. Uh, one thing that was really uh, uh, interesting uh, was that well, I have not known the names of the presenters until now, actually. I have not known the affiliations of, of the presenters until now. So it was truly entirely um, blind um, sort of um, you know uh, review process, and uh, you can genuinely appreciate the quality of the papers. And it was not really swayed by any kinds of subjective judgment uh, related to affiliation or gender or whatever. So this is like perfect uh, example of how uh, the blind review uh, can proceed. So as I said, uh, we have uh, two papers lined up for today. Uh, this is the way I'm going to, uh, uh, you know, proceed uh, the first session. Um, each presenter, two presenters, will uh, make presentation for about 20 minutes. So please mark your time. It's less than 20 minutes, and then after that, uh, we've got uh, four designated discussants, um, uh, which are 
which are really wonderful uh, discussions. Like, you know, how come you guys all you know go to wonderful schools? <laughs> I'm impressed. And then uh, each of the discussions will uh, spend about like 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes, like uh, to make sure we'll have uh, plenty of time uh, to op to open the uh, session up to the uh, floor. So toward the end, well, we should be able to have about 15 to 20 minutes uh, to be able to have um, uh, you know more like a, a floor discussion. Okay, um, now uh, let me introduce the first uh, presenter. Um, who is, you might be very curious, um, uh, Park eun -young from uh, University of Cambridge. Uh, she'll be this, uh, presenting her paper titled Conflict Between Classes in Modern Korea, Foundation for Social Development. Please welcome uh, Ms. Park. Yeah. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Eun Young Park, and I'm going to present my paper on the topic of conflicts between classes in modern Korea, which can be sourced for social development. Let me first introduce the contents of my paper. First, let, I'm going to introduce the three types of conflicts in Korea, and then I'm going to go on to contribution of such conflicts to Korean society. And I'm going to go on to discuss about the model for conflict conflict contribution to Korean society, and then also argument against conflict. So let me first introduce the conflicts in Korea. So as we have discussed briefly in our opening sentence of this conference, while conflict is seen as something that challenges traditional norm and stability of a society, it is also a path towards positive change and development needed for well-being of a society. So this paper will attempt to study three kinds of conflicts that modern Co Korean society after 1945 went through, mainly focusing on how these conflicts brought the development and if a general pattern can be found in these conflicts. And this paper will also attempt to show how Korean society can utilize ongoing conflicts between classes in order to achieve further development in the future and how to develop a specific model in Korea. So, let us first go on to economic conflicts in Korean society. So, as you may know, Korea went through dramatic changes in its economy. So after the Korean War, Korea remained one of the poorest countries in the world. So in 1960s, its gross domestic product per capita was $79, lower than most of the Latin American and some sub-Saharan African countries. However, it went through a rapid growth from 1960s to 1980s. In 1990s, Korean economy met the ice and financial crisis, but it soon recovered from the crisis with the help of government-directed investment. So because of these dramatic ups and downs, the economic gap between the people started to grow. And because of the government policy it tends to support the conglomerates through these changes while lacking all the sustainability of economic balance between the people. So let me first introduce the two main types of econo economic conflicts that Korean society went through. First is a conflict between employees and employers in Korean society, and the second is between conglomerates and the laborers. So, hmm, there we are. The labor movement of Korea began from 1970s. So it was very active in Korean society, but as you can see, the Korean labor market has a very specific characteristic that brought conflicts in Korean society. First of all, it was state controlled, and it was also preventing, the Korean government was preventing and breaking strikes. And also, it was spying on any hint of independent union, and it was especially hard upon the women. The age of, and to add a detail about the last point, the age of textile industry workers, uh, which were mostly women, were mostly between 18 and 22, and the working condition was extremely poor. So because of this fact, um, at the time, those who were critical of such working conditions were arrested, such as Port Kim ji and because they were accused of promoting class division, thereby allowing poetry to be manipulating the North Korean propaganda. So considering that Korean war just halted 
a decade ago, the sensitivity of Korean government was understandable, but it was still being the causes of the conflict. So which causes the demonstration tail emulation, which was a comp an event that causes that, be, that triggered the Korean labor movement in Korea in 1970s. And also, in, in recently, there is a Samsung conflict where Samsung was accused of exploiting younger workers by exposing them to the danger of cancer and the leak of hydrofluoric acid, to which Samsung has claimed that acid leak wasn't in gas form, therefore not really harmful to the workers. However, the case was serious enough to create the new term Samsung cancer, and also brought the labor movement of Korea once again in 2010. So such conflict between the companies and their employees are not known to the public at the first time because most of them are reserved by the union and not publicized. And most of Korean companies want to keep their good public image. So in addition, the workers must comply to the company in order to keep their jobs and because of instability of most jobs. However, because of such conflicts was now being publicized uh, by these people and more labor workers. People are now more aware of the danger that exists in these companies and are therefore more careful when they are being employed. So even those people who are not directly related to the job market or this market are still aware of such conflicts, uh, which allows these people, the public, to be aware of the labor movements in Korea and also, brown, uh, and also bringing the social force of Korea to the public instead of the government. So the conflict between government and employees are so contributing to the enhancement of working conditions and product safety, while it's allowing public to realize the labor movement in Korea. So let us then go on to the conflict between conglomerates and the laborers. The so co conflict between conglomerates and laborers also played a huge role in economic development of Korea. So until 1990s, the Korean government still had its support on the conglomerates. Uh, with the research preemption and tax redemption, which was under the term five-year economic plan. So it was focusing more on the primary conglomerates instead of the labor working condition, and also which was blamed for stopping small business from developing by many politicians and also by the public. And also it enhanced the more working environmental problem. So although these uh, five-year economic plans helped Korea to be one of the um, great Asian economically developed countries. Such failure disappeared after the criticism of conglomerates by the public started to rise. So during Asian financial crisis, people started to witness that while many of the businesses fell down into failure, the conglomerates maintained their business through the means and power that they have gained from such uh, government plan. So seeing this, many of the public who lost their jobs and businesses started to protest against the government and the conglomerates. So the factory worker protest of 1975 and the Busan Masan Democratic People's Movement of 1979 all happened at this time. So the result of such conflict was that several laws were made to prevent the conglomerates from having too much power. And such as the law for separating finance from industry and the law for limiting the amount of government investment. And although such laws did not prevent the conglomerates from dominating Korean economy, it still gave a way to smaller businesses as a result of their struggle to break through the walls of conglomerates in the economy, and which also resulted in diverse and circular economics in Korean economies. And also it, again, uh, it also brought public awareness of such conflicts. And now we will go on to social conflicts of Korean society. So social conflicts are much more diverse than the economic conflicts in Korean society. So when we say social conflicts, it also includes the education reform, the legacy in the job market, and the school development of Korean society, and also changing value of society, which refers to the conflicting traditional and the modern value of society. So if, let me first explain about the education reforms of Korean society. So Korea was always known for its education here uh, since its, throughout its history. And in 1948 to 1960, the college and the high school enrollment has nearby quadrupled. 
um, compared to 1930s. So with most universities and being in Seoul, um, many of the Korean families now started to send their sons and daughters to the Seoul, which need require a lot of economic work. So there was strong incentive to stay in college and then in graduate school since jobs were often available to upon graduation. So such notion of university degrees changed the role as a like, working permit of the university instead of improving the intellectual level of the students. So such zeal, uh, which was skewed, uh, brought the conflict of the education classes because first of all, there was eco economic benefit that was needed to go on to this education zeal. And second, there was this uh, skewed role of Korean education classes. So the reform was implemented by the Ministry of Education and also by the public awareness of such issue, which was supported by the media. So reflecting such issues in the disparity created by those who have received upper education and those who did not uh, was reflected through the media and went through several steps. So there was prohibition of private after school tutoring and also a reform and creation of many different kinds of education process, education system. And also in April Revolution, uh, people started to rise to the education market of Korean, uh, the job market of Korean society, which also allowed for government support of the job market of these people. And finally, there is a changing value of social conflicts in Korean society. In Korean society, because of its too rapid development, there is great conflict between the traditional value and the modern value. And because of this traditional value and modern value, the, even the intellectual class still had to go through many uh, discussion of this, um, this changing value, which created this uh, phenomenon called the anomic crisis, which refers to the young people Especially, people, especially young people, uh, not being able to adjust to the change of social value. So, however, although there was this conflict, the social conflict still contributed by allowing people to recognize what is the Korean value and allowing people to decide the identity of the Korean society. And let us go on to uh, political conflicts. Uh, there are two kind of types of political conflicts in Korean society. First, there is a Korean co political conflict between the government and the public, and the political conflict between the different political parties. So, a lot, many of the Koreans frown upon the conflict between the political parties because many Korean people believe that political parties, whether conservative or liberal, are consisted of people from well to the classes. However, the conflict between the political parties also contributed to the development of Korean politics as well in several different ways. So co conflicts of political parties attributed to the reason why the Korean politics became more aware to the ideas and the need of the public because now the political parties have to reflect the will of the Korean people in their ideas. And while they went through the conflict of the political parties, the public was also aware of the different political agenda of the political system in Korean society. And the political conflict between the government and the public, um, especially during the last Korean presidential election in 2012, uh, shows how much Korean public has grown throughout all these conflicts by, uh, uh, again, and seeing the important agenda of Korean politics and also by allowing themselves to be expressed through media and through political means of Korean society. So if you look at the examples of the conflict between the government and the public, there is first April Revolution, which finished the agenda from leftover from the liberation period. So although the April Revolution had when created a lot of conflict between the public and the government and resulted in many people being arrested and also a lot of viol violence. It still allowed the Korean public and the government to think over again on what is the agenda of the Korean politics that is needed to be thought over by the public and the government itself. 
And also there is a free trade agreement with the US, which you might remember from the year 2009. So again, although the government and public had to go through a lot of conflict and a lot of um, demonstration, it shows that the public was aware, aware of the transparency and was interested in the transparency of the government and also brought a lot of social attention and active participation of the public to the Korean politics. And if you look at the details of conflict between the political parties, there is a presidential election which the different political parties have to compete against each other to make their candidates present. And there's also national security crisis which is still going on. So this conflict between political parties also shows that these parties and the politicians become more aware of the idea and the need of the public and also develop ideas, ideology of their own political parties. So until now, because, of, because Korea, the history of modern Korean politics is only 50, 60 years, the identity of its Korean political parties was very insecure. It has been, it has went, it went through constant changes in its identity, and it was more focused on the legacy and the development of the economic development of its party instead of the political identities and ideology. However, by going through these such conflicts, now these political parties can show more of their ideology and also analyze and express the identity of its party. So we are going to look at the more of details of contribution of economic, social, and political conflicts to the Korean society. So if you look at contribution of economic conflicts of Korean society, which is most frequently seen form of conflicts in Korean society, first of all, it brought the development of media and agenda setting in Korean society. Since 1950s, the, one of the biggest reforms of Korea was focused on the economies, economics. And since media has been reflecting the people's will to the economic development and the labor movement, um, it set an agenda of, so, of this economic market of Korean society and saw the direction of Korean politics, Korean government, and the public of the future Korean economy. And second, the rights of laborers and improvement of working condition was also followed by the con economic conflicts in Korean society, especially through the labor movement and the reflection of Korean media of such conflicts. And if you look at the contribution of social conflicts to the Korean society, um, again, it was the Korean society was able to reflect on the important values of Korean society. As I explained, Korean society, the history of Korean society, modern Korean society was quite short, but it had to go through all the changes of conflict between the traditional value and the modern value of the Korean society. However, because of such social conflicts, the Korean public and the Korean society was now being able to organize the, what is the value of the Korean society that people should pursue. And finally, there is a contribution of political conflicts. So first, there is a solid method it brought the solid method to reflect their will to the po politics. And second, the public become more interested in the pop politics and brought more public participation in the Republic of uh, Korean government. And now I want to introduce the model for co conflict contribution to Korean society. So there are two reasons why we need model development. One is that we need to generalize the conflict model in order to apply it to the future conflict that will happen in Korea. And second it is, is to use the model for future conflict resolution that will happen in Korea. So if you look at Goldfin and Robert Gold conflict resolution model, there are five types of conflict resolution. So first is avoidance, second is yielding, third is competitive, fourth is cooperation, and five, fifth is conciliation. So this is a balance between the group think and the individual think. So Korean model for conflict resolution, if you look at the, the examples that was given by this paper, um, it is more focused on the cooperation, collaboration between the cooperation and the conciliation. So the decision makers of conflict resolutions are both public and those who are involved. So by public is, I mean by the general public who are not involved in the conflict. 
So it shows the high interest of Korean public in the com conflict that it happens in Korean society. And it also shows the rapid development of media and social network that also contributed to the interest of Korean public in the conflict. So as a conclusion, so Korea went through diverse conflicts at different levels and of different issues. And many economic, social, and political conflicts of Korea allowed for many changes that allowed Korea to become more developed country through conflicts and the process of revolution. And in the future, we can use this model to predict and decide how Korea is going to go through conflict resolution. So this is end of my presentation. And I'm going to end my pre presentation with a sentence presented by Tocqueville. Um, so co conflict in Korea has contributed greatly to the liberty of Korea and the development of Korean society. And as he said, liberty is generally established in the midst of storms. So, which refers to conflict. It is perfected by civil right discord, and its benefits cannot be appreciated until it is already old. So I think this sentence also it summarizes how co co conflicts in Korean society contributed to the development of Korean society. And these are the further research. So I'm going to finish it really quick because I went over time. So. As for the research, there can be conflict and its contribution to the develop development in other societies with unique characteristics as Korea can be researched, and also how conflicts can be managed by the nation, nation states in order to create a positive synergy. And also, whether a society may change the methods of resolution depending on the amount of information available to the two classes and the third parties may be researched through, um, regarding this paper. Oh, thank you very much. I'm Song Yun Park. Uh, it is a great honor to present here about my concerning issue constraint cooperation in South Korea's nuclear power policy and its side effect. I would like to open this issue with a brief overview on the political history of Korean nuclear power plant. Since President Lee Seung Man built the foundation on nuclear power plant, it has made great outcomes during the decade. After the first operation of Kori No. 1 in 1978, nuclear power plant was soon built in Gyeongju, Yongwang, Ulsin without significant com conflict. Despite the major nuclear power plant accident at Three Mile Island and Chernobyl, nuclear power grows uh, rapidly until the late 1990s and the energy supply share of nuclear power plant exceeded that of coal in 1986 and thereafter. Korea was the only country that promoted nuclear power policy after the accident. It was possible due to the atmosphere created under the authoritarian government. After the military coup in 1961, authoritarian government pushed their policy strongly under the slogan of economic development. People were also pushed to cooperate on nuclear power policy to develop economy and diverse uh, energy sources. This, I think this was phase one of Korean nuclear power plant policy. However, since 1988, if after uh, President Lu Tse-woo was elected, uh, growth of democratic desire also affected on nuclear power policy. Radioactive waste disposal site decided as Ulzin under the authoritarian government was cancelled with resident opposition and started to drift over 20 years. Conflict emerged on the surface. The management policy was changed too. The word acceptability created and was brought into the core of the policy. Law supporting surrounding areas of power, pl power plant established in 1989 to enhance acceptability. It was quite successful that Korea could lead the era of nuclear power renaissance, was those high 
or with those high acceptability. However, Fukushima accident and current nuclear power plant scandal shows that the policies were mere conflict covering or conflict evading, <coughs> not the problem solving action. After 2011, there is emerging new demand and necessity of nuclear power policy. Now I'd like to talk about the limitation of current nuclear power plant management policy and recommend new keynotes for the third phase of nuclear policy. Radioactive disposal site problem shows feature of Korean nuclear governance. After the first larger scale uh, demonstration in Amyondo 1990s, uh, public acceptability began to treat it as a key factor of nuclear policy. To contain acceptability, government tried uh, this diverse method. Passing, passing through a, a nine cancellation of site to over 20 years, amount of the compensation uh, grew sharply. However, the blind policy drew acceptability pass over many important values. I'd like to focus on Kurokdo and Gyeongju's case. Actually, current site evaluation criteria gives 30 point, 30 percent of points to the resident accept, accept Stability and other factors are related with environmental, social, and technical safety. However, if we look inside uh, the historical cases, we can soon notice that government has given much more values on gaining acceptabilities. Uh, to gain cooperation, government chose Gurokdo in 1995. It was a really small island near Incheon, which had only nine households. Uh, government's, uh, superficial, government's superficial craftiness ended in failure because the active threat was detected after um, the beginning of uh, um, construction. It's an obvious case that shows government's political priority on gaining uh, cooperation. In 2009, uh, 2005, after a uh, decade passed, passed uh, Gyeongju showed a similar situation. Government could gain people's cooperation through the economic compensation and resident referendum. However, it again looked over the safety factors. Currently, active threat was detected and uh, construction is delaying uh, in many years. Gyeongju deposit site is still under the construction and government is even hiding the site assessment reports except one of uh, residents, uh, one of one uh, resident acceptability. Civil society claimed that active birds can affect on the nuclear power plant near Gyeongju and Kori. However, the claim are not accepted. Uh, government is even trying to build new power plants on those areas because it is easier to gain acceptability from the sites already have already have nuclear power plants. Uh, with the main concerns of, on economic compensation to get uh, acceptability, uh, other discourses cannot say it on. So the economic compensation is. Uh, is the um, key strategy for the government to gain co cooperation in Korea. And it, uh, the SSP law is um, the basic uh, basement for uh, the strategy. Uh, it is the law that gives um, economic compensation near uh, nuclear power plant area with the electric Power Industry Foundation Fund and fund from uh, Korea Hydro, Hydro and Nuclear um, Powers um, um, Profit. And KHNP seems very um, satis satisfied with uh, their policy and they are framing uh, current policy as the uh, economic com uh, compensation. 
네, 유리와 설비 문제라든가 증기 발생 교체 방평을 정리로 이송하는 문제 식당 문제 결국은 근저에는 주민들 자기 그 지원 결국은 지원이 됐어요. 금전적인 지원, 금전적인 지원, 돈과 관련돼 있어요. 어느 많은 지원을 받기 위해서 이렇게 얘기한 것도 있고 그렇죠. So the amount of economic compensation is growing every year, every every year, and you know the uh, com economic compensation for Gyeongju was um, almost about uh, three billion won. However. Uh, people in uh, in people sleep uh, near uh, nuclear power plant doesn't do not satisfy um, uh, their com compensation. They need more, like this. The reason that we doesn't uh, we don't demonstrate isn't that we don't feel anxious. We are just surpa surpassing construction on new nuclear and. The below one is more um, interesting because uh, he's uh, one of the leader uh, in the pro-nuclear group uh, in Ujin area. But he said, of course, I cannot believe the nuclear power plant management. So I think it's the paradox of a high acceptability and low credibility. Uh, with, the com with the economic compensation, uh, government get, can could get um, cooperation from the local residents, but uh, they could not uh, build some credibility. And people people live near nuclear power plant region. Thinks uh, nuclear power plants impoverished uh, their uh, their local uh, economics and the culture. Uh, it is very interesting that uh, local culture movement is uh, going with the anti-nuclear movement. It is uh, very different from other um, countries' cases like uh, Chinon in France. Uh, you can see, uh, if, if, uh, this is the picture of uh, label of the uh, wine from Chinon and that um, um, cute little um, circle is uh, nuclear power plant in Chino. It is the same thing that people put some, stick some labels in uh, Yongbang Gulbi or some crabs of uh, crabs of uh, Ujin. And another problem is uh, emerging new actors from outside. Uh, after Fukushima accident, uh, Busan local legis re legislative body uh, uh, declared the sh uh, for the shutdown of Kori number one. Uh, it was very unusual because uh, before uh, the accident, uh, every uh, these courses was closed under closed under uh, the local level, and people did not even aware on these issues. Same, same thing, uh, uh, Kang lawyer, uh, who is in the uh, Society for the Busan Regional Lawyers, uh, gives injunctions for the shutdown of Kori number one in 2011 after Fukushima. And he said that, uh, if, uh, she said that before the Fukushima nuclear accident, I didn't aware of the regional nuclear plant. However, after the accident, I realized that range of the nuclear accident effect is quite wide. In this context, I started to get worried about it. And the problem is what he wants is not just economic compensation, or and he cannot cooperate under uh, current uh, current acceptability management system. He said that there are so many limitations to get information. After the suit, there were few information about the nuclear power policy, uh, power plant, and we could accept. 
even though those acceptability information was limited in terms of the time and the place by KHMP. And moreover, SSP law uh, is banding this issue to this issue to grow up. Hongbok Kang is a um, member of Gijang Legis Legislative Guard Party, and which is really dear to uh, Kori Nuclear Power Plant. And she said, "This is this problem is not to be opposed. Uh, they don't know the effect. The fact uh, in this statement, they is some um, actors from outside who want to join uh, these issues newly and." Kang dong and Han sung Lee, uh, the members from outside uh, say uh, they are very hard to uh, engage with uh, local residents and grow some new cri criticism because uh, the SSP law has, mm, which, which has some boundary to give compensation to, mm, uh, to mm, former actors um, then to um, doing some corporate, uh, cooperative actions um, toward uh, KHMP. So, Hyo Sung Nam said due to uh, the anti-nuclear anti group leader in Ulgin said uh, due to the different interests of local and outside activists, it is hard to work together. It is frustrating Right, in situation that no single large scale group exists to influence on, influence on KHMP's arbitrary decision making. And Professor Q. Yar Ha uh, in Seoul National University, who teaches uh, um, about nuclear technology, he said there are no criticism on nuclear power plant based on professionalism. The nuclear central uh, nuclear cartel will be ended in corruption, and you see the Korea problem already shows the corruption these days. So uh, I want to uh, conclude, and I, I want to bring Shinong's case again. Uh, I um, sort of researched on um, about on um, this um, uh, areas um, uh, areas in depth, and I could. Uh, notice that uh, there was uh, there there was some kind of credibility uh, between local residents and, and some uh, nuclear generator, uh, but it was it could build on the uh, conflict because uh, the workers in the uh, nuclear generator uh, was. Uh, live in that area and can um, open the problem of the nuclear generation, uh, nuclear power generator. So with that uh, conflict, uh, with with the process of that conflict reserved, uh, reserved, uh, that it can it could make transparency. Transparency made conflict, but um, it could again went to, uh, again resulted into uh, transparency and credibility was through um, that uh, atmosphere. So, France, uh, France has a uh, reformation of nuclear management post in 2006 and it is, it has same uh, logic with the Shinong's case. Uh, it focuses on uh, transparency and it expects some building building uh, credibility, not just uh, public acceptability in the in surface. So, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Alain Bugat, uh, the director of CEA in France. Uh, every related part of nuclear energy should be provide honest and clear information to the public. It takes a long time of effort to gain trust from the public, but if the cover up occurs, uh, it can disappear in the moment. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, thanks for wonderful presentations. Uh, for presenters, Lai Bun Young, Park Sung Yoon. Well, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm quite rusty at um, nuclear power plant. <laughs> I know about Fukushima, and um, that certainly made me realize the salience of a nuclear power plant and uh, its danger, uh, the, the ways in which we can make it more safer. Um, but in that way, I think an excellent shot was quite instrumental in raising awareness. Um, maybe conflict um, has provided uh, you know, um, the momentum for the public to get to learn about power plant, uh, uh, the danger involved with that. Um, anyways, um, thanks for uh, Park Yang as well. Uh, she made a wonderful uh, sort of uh, overview of the Korean modern history. I, I feel that way. <laughs> if there are so many, a couple of um, you know, uh, <coughs> the audience who wants to learn about the Korean studies in the modern Korean history, uh, I think uh, this is the right, right place to learn about the, um, the path that Korea has, has gone through. Now, I'm going to invite the um, discussants uh, for uh, beginning from the first uh, paper. Uh, we've got two designated discussants. Uh, the first discussant is um, Ka Kang Hyung Min from Korea University, and the other is uh, Chi Hae Soo from uh, Yonsei University. I'm looking forward to your wonderful take on the, the papers, and please keep uh, your discussion under uh, seven minutes, five to ten minutes. Um, uh, I want to give um, uh, Scott, you know, presenters to respond to your your questions. So I think five to ten minutes, uh, five to seven minutes might be ideal for uh, discussion. It's your turn. Well, first of all, I would like to point out that the, the paper overall, I enjoyed very much reading it. I spent about five hours reading this about more than three times yesterday, um, <laughs> trying to come up with any ideas of criticism or anything. Um, the, but, the, but overall, the paper itself was very interesting, and um, I am excited to, and also honored to, uh, have this opportunity to share my opinion on this paper. Um, well, since I don't have much time, I'm just going to lay out some of the questions and some of the comments they ha that I uh, had while I was reading and listening to your uh, presentation. I have about six points. Um, so to begin with, uh, number one. Um, the question is, to me, I wasn't sure, I wasn't clear uh, when you were talking about the difference between economic conflict and social conflict. Uh, when you were mentioning economic conflict, um, I was actually expecting that you would talk more about economic development, like how economic de conflict led to economic development. But instead of that, um, um, you chose to talk more about uh, class struggles that concerns with labor movements like conflicts between employees and employers. And to me, that sounds more like social conflict than econ economic conflict. So um, if you could explain the, the boundaries uh, of, of between uh, economic conflict and social conflict that you have chosen to, uh, to put in, um, I would uh, appreciate that. Uh, number two, uh, I had a question about uh, some, some parts of the explanation when you were laying, the ti laying out the timetable uh, for the Asia fi Asian financial crisis. I wasn't sure which Asian financial crisis you were referring to because um, as far as uh, my understanding, uh, usually Asian financial crisis refers to the one in 1997 and 1998. Um, but um, you have mentioned in your paper that as a result of this Asian financial crisis, there were many protests and movements. But um, as the example for these protests and movements, you talk about the protests in 1970s, which um, to me it sounds like a, a problem of time lapse. So I would like to hear you uh, on this question of which AFC or Asian final financial crisis you were referring to. Um, number three, the question of ideology. Um, I uh, wanted to ask, uh, what kind of definition you had in mind when you were talking about ideology because when you were, when you mentioned that um, nowadays political parties in Korea uh, they, they find it easier uh, uh, to express their ideology uh, in a sort of way uh, set, uh, setting their political agenda but to me it sounds like um, this is different from um, 
their uh, ideology is different from political agenda in a sense. Um, from my understanding, political parties, uh, although they are, they can now easily uh, understand their interests, or it, it has become easier to uh, accommodate their interest. Um, I think ideology uh, is something different than that. It's not about the interest of the people that per se. Um, uh, because it has to do with their own political party's manifesto. So I would like to point out that. Um, since I don't have much time, I'm just going to lay out the, the other two very quickly. Um, on the point when you pointed out about groupthink uh, in Korea, um, I, would like to, I would like to ask about what kind of examples you could give when there was a, uh, a groupthink uh, incident in Korea that led to uh, incorrect or deviant decision-making outcomes. Like to me, groupthink uh, rins, reminds me of some of the situations going on in Japan at the moment, for example. Um, but if there is any incident like that uh, in Korea, I would like to hear about it more. And one last one is, um, uh, in your paper you have mentioned that during the April Revolution, uh, as you were mentioning April Revolution, you said that it is very likely that without the April Revolution, the Korean government would have lasted the tradition of autocratic government instead of the modern-day democratic government with a four-year non-repetitive term for the president and direct election system. But after the, uh, the, this incident, uh, uh, April Revolution, we still have to remember that there was a dicta dictatorship regime under Park Chung-hee. And um, uh, with this dictatorship uh, in ex existence, we still were able to go through a democratization. So I wanted to ask you, what kind of that, uh, variables were you thinking of uh, when you were making this argument that without the April Revolution, there couldn't ha have been any democratization movement going on? Uh, that will be uh, my uh, take on your paper. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I find your paper was very interesting. I think you tried a lot to categorize the current issues in Korean society and also suggest historical issues for um, each category and also generalize their parents how they contribute social development in Korea. However, I think um, it could have been a better paper if you have presented concrete grounds for each contribution and also detail the um, cause and effect relationship clearly. Uh, for each example, you detail the event very clearly but, oh, but you, I think you missed uh, their contributions to social development. Um, you described it too short, relatively, and only based on only uh, only based on common sense, not without without any um, explanation, or rather than based on clearly proved cause and effect relationship. So I'd like to say I believe your paper could be improved um, if you could as some proof grounds and logical cause and effect relationship. So for example, um, at the end of your paper, you wrote that conflicts in Korea contributed to the development of media and growing public interest in Korea society. But you didn't really suggest any, uh, any grounds for this. And also you said, um, you said Korea public has become more interested in politics of Korea because of the political conflict. But actually, you know, um, last year's last year's uh, electoral electoral participation rate in uh, national assembly election was only fifty four point two percent. I think it's hard to say that um, it is shown by the high participation rate in votes. So I'm wondering that why did you say? Uh, how do you think of this? And then also. It was very impressive that you suggested models for conflict resolution for the future, but I think what you said for um, modern Korean society's resolution and and uh, traditional value was kind of contradictory with what you wrote previously. You said um, traditional value is better for building a competitive resolution. However, you wrote uh, before when you described for social conflict. You said why Korean traditional society extremely value cooperation over conflict because of its homogeneity and its value of peace. So I, I am wondering, uh, you have logical queries here. Also, uh, my last question was um, the party thing. 
you said um, each party seems to uh, each party can develop their own ideology and identity um, because of their conflict with each other. However, I think each party actually they seems to give up their identity to draw and um, embrace more length for a larger range of voters and. For example, last last, last um, presidential election, uh, we can see a lot of convergence in the uh, in both parties' uh, electorally policies, and also likely in political conflicts. Also, it, I don't think it's only limited in Korean situation. I think it's uh, common sense and it's commonly observed. Uh, observative uh, characteristic in multi-party system. So I feel like um, you can more detail on this uh, or only Korean society. Thank you. Seems like uh, we're going to give uh, the audience more time to reflect on the papers. Uh, the presenters uh, discussions have raised a lot of uh, you know, questions and inquiries. and. Um, um, some encouragements and some concerns. Uh, you don't have to respond to all the uh, comments made uh, cover, uh, cover to cover, but um, can you respond to some of the questions you think are um, you know, relevant to uh, your studies or crucial? Hi, thank you for your comments. Um, I'm going to comment on Mr. Hanmin Kang's comments first and then go on to Mr. Ms. Hizuji's comments. Uh, first of all, uh, Mr. Kang asked about the difference between economic and social conflict. Um, I would like to remind that my paper was about conflicts between classes in modern Korea. And so, although the conflicts may themselves may be inclu um, included both economic and social aspects, which is expected because every conflict that happens in a society should have some social pers perspective in its conflicts. However, because the economic conflicts mentioned in my paper was more distinguished between the econo different economic classes, and the social conflicts mentioned in my paper was distinguished more between the social classes, which we more refer to not the economic status of people, but more e intellectual or social perspective of people. So that was how I distinguished those conflicts. Uh, second, um, Mr. Kang has mentioned about AFC, which is usually referred to the 1997 and 1998, and which was also the financial crisis that I have been referring to. Here, I believe that my wording of such paper was created the misunderstanding. I was trying to say that um, financial crisis, such as uh, AFC, created, led on to the protests and conflicts of people, which included the protest of 1970s, which was the biggest example given in my paper. And third, about the ideology, um, I'm going to include the comments for Ms. G as well, because this is inclusive. Um, but in, as Mr. Kang said, I, ideology and agenda is definitely a very different idea. Agenda is more about the interest and the social issue of Korean society. Why ideology is the representative idea of such um, political parties and also of, of public themselves. So, in my paper, um, I believe that political conflict has brought the development of both a social agenda and the ideology of its public or the political parties. But first of all, there is the agenda development because Obviously, the public are now interested in such agenda, and the political parties are now discussing such agenda. And also, through the discussion of such agenda, the political ideology of the public involved and the political parties can be identified and also defined by the political identities themselves. And fourth, about the group think. But groupthink does not only lead to incorrect or divine outcome, but it can also lead to the correct outcome. Well, there's actually not really correct or incorrect outcome in the society, sociology, I will correct that. But um, groupthink more refers to the idea when a person is more interested in the 
benefit of the whole group instead of the individuals themselves. So I think Korean society values it more in the traditional society rather than in the modern society. So in the traditional society, um, we, and this was also an example that was presented by Ms. Sung Yun Park during her presentation of the uh, nuclear plants, where the residents of such um, certain areas, um, although like they often have to, they have to like give up certain portion of their benefits in order to create a better reservation for their whole community. Uh, so I think that can be an also an example of groupthink, and also a lot of a lot of um, agenda and a lot of propaganda made by the Korean government focus more on the group thing, such as the um, AFC and its gold collection following that. And finally, um, the April Revolution, uh, I think that was also the one problem such as the AFC. I was trying to say that the April Revolution does not directly lead the autocratic government, but it contributed to how people now said, the how public became engaged and interested in the political thought and the idea about democratization. And since we have this time, I will now quickly move on to Ms. G's comments. Um, I appreciate your comments about the concrete, setting concrete ground and the cousin in that, which I also believe can be reflected in my further research. Um, I will move on to <coughs> the ground for uh, electoral participation for the media development. And although, as Ms. G has um, said, the, um, the um, electoral participation was, can be thought as low because it was 54%, but compared to the past participation in Cambridge High, especially in those um, age groups whose particip participation in the politics was pretty much low. So in the age group of 40s and 50s, the participation rate has risen up to 20% in certain areas. And in the whole Korea, it went right up to 10%. So it can be uh, so to say that there was some causes of media development of electoral participation. And Ms. G also mentioned um, the difference between ideology and identity, which I think was partially um, answered by my comments on Mr. Kang's comments on ideology and identity. And Ms. G also has mentioned that many of the examples in political uh, conflicts can be seen in other societies as well. However, I, although like such similar conflicts can be seen in other, Korean, other societies you know, in many other forms, I believe that because these are specific examples in Korea, we can still think of these as examples of Korean conflicts. And although they can be generalized into conflicts that can be seen in other societies as well, we can still fit it into the Korean general model of Korean conflict. Thank you. Well, I think uh, you might want to respond to one of the, the excellent questions raised by um, GSU about uh, you know, uh, one of your conclusions involving the effect of um, uh, political um, sphere, uh, the conflict that emerged in the political sphere. Uh, what you said was that the kinds of conflicts uh, that occurred among political parties uh, tend to lead to, um, you know, some positive outcomes, like um, uh, in ways that people became more and more interested in politics because of the the, the controversies and conflicts like uh, that arise out of um, uh, the political sphere. But uh, as um, G, uh, Hesu mentioned about, said, argued, uh, there is a uh, you know, the, you know, the conclusion might be the, the opposite. You know, but because uh, people get to learn about all those kinds of political conflicts that would uh, develop political cynicism rather than uh, enthusiasm toward uh, poli uh, politics. In other words, um, the kinds of conflicts they know would lead to a situation where they might become more uh, you know, uh, skeptical about politics. How do you respond to the, the question? Because uh, you, and everyone might feel the same way. Uh, how many of you might be interested in political uh, you know, politics and the competition among uh, political parties? Uh, it might be the opposite. So that that's a good argument. How do you respond to, to the argument? First of all, there are two points that I want to make about the point made by Professor 
Haku and Mrs. G. Uh, first of all, I think if such cynicism was brought upon by the public uh, as a result of the deep thoughts and the consideration of the politics themselves, I think it is also, in a general way, a form of participation and so of expression of public will to the, pub the politics of Korean society. Because many of the politics now believe that the fact that publics are turning against the government or being indifferent to the government is also part of showing the expression of Korean public, the government themselves. As long as the public is aware and the reason for such indifference is because of the political system and the political direction of the Korean politics. And second, I believe that it is not directly due to the conflict itself, but rather due to the conflict resolution. Which, and because of that, we should not blame the conflict for such indifferences, but we should rather develop on, upon a new resolution model for such conflict, so that at the resolution of such conflict, the public can be directed towards more interest of such um, political or other conflicts that can be found in Korean society, instead of being directed more to the indifference of such conflicts. And such resolution model, or at least um, developed by um, in this paper, uh, can be directed and, and constructed by the society and by the will of the public and cooperation between by the will of the public and the government themselves that are involved in the conflict. Well, you're so good at defending yourself. I'm so impressed. <laughs> um, uh, let me ask you one more question. Uh, since you're arguing that you're examining like all those kinds of conflicts, like uh, economic conflict, social conflict, and political conflict, and after uh, you know heard uh, what you argued, uh, I feel like you know all those conflicts we we are noting might have a good uh, you know positive consequences on our life, our social life. Uh, that's a very uh, that's an argument that is. Um, you know, that is known to us, like in the name of uh, functionalism. So functionalism uh, is the, the set of argument that, that's, that argues that, you know, the, um, anything in our society, any social institution, any uh, situation would serve for a certain purpose. So in ways that it would uh, make um, some harmony in, in society. Uh, I, I feel like uh, that, I feel like you are invoking uh, functionalism when you examine different kinds of conflicts. Uh, what it means is that it, you, you wouldn't necessarily answer the question, uh, which is the, the question we're grappling with uh, 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 this year, uh, when is conflict better than cooperation? Uh, it, I'm not so much compelled uh, yet uh, how conflict leads to cooperation, under what conditions uh, you know, uh, conflict leads to, uh, is better than cooperation, because you're uh, you know, continuously uh, invoking functionalist argument um, saying that all the kinds of social conflict would have some uh, positive consequences. How do you defend yourself? <laughs> okay, um, first of all, I, mean, I wasn't trying to defend myself with personalism, but since Dr. Ku uh, speaks on personalism, I would first like to mention that um, in in my paper, as you can see in the argument against personal, uh, I guess against conflict, uh, conflict is not always bringing the positive effects. Um, this paper also mentions the violence it brought upon the Korean society, and also the uh, lasting conflicts that um, hold back the development of Korean society in many ways. However, um, I believe because and. In this paper, I, um, it's not to argue that conflict is better than the cooperation um, in any time, or because the conflict brought out the <coughs> better result. Because if we just say that conflict is better than the cooperation, just because it brought out better result, it's just a matter of love instead of um, the social construction. So I believe conflicts can be only better than the cooperation when our society builds on the best resolution of the Korean society. So that is why I brought on the general model of the Korean society and of the com general model of conflict resolution of Korean society. So I believe that conflict may not be the better than the cooperation as long if we do not have the right resolution that, can, that we can use the conflict to improve, develop and improve our Korean society. 
Um, however, we if we develop in our society of a uh, general resolution that can be brought upon the development that can bring the development of Korean society through all these conflicts, then if we use the re re that resolution in right place and right time, conflict can be better than cooperation uh, in many ways. So it boils down to you know the, the conflict resolution mechanism, whether we have um, the, the mechanism in place. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Um, all right, thank you so much. And let's move to the second paper and invite him to uh, discuss it. Uh, beginning from Taeyeon um, Park. Okay, um, first of all, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, I think your paper is amazing in terms of the depth and clarity of information in that you've conducted first an analysis of data and then uh, fieldwork research and interviews. And I also like, like, like the unconventional angle from which you observe the case. Uh, you specifically pointed out the acceptab enhance acceptability enhancement policy as a principal cause for faults found in nuclear reactors or, by extension, exceptional pro-nuclear drift within Korea's domestic society. So in this context, I think your paper is right on in demonstrating that having conflict is not necessarily a negative force. But though I still have two, uh, several questions, um, first of all, I think the essay needed to include at least like a vague picture of conflict settlement mechanism because uh, your argument that conflict is better than cooperation uh, is uh, basically lies on the foundational idea that conflict would have been uh, settled in the end. The case of a French city uh, does illustrate the positive outcomes of conflict, but I feel like it doesn't actually show how conflicts have actually been solved. And especially the case of Korea's nuclear power policy, um, a conflict solution does not appear that easy in that uh, how should the government uh, settle the conflict with the public to uh, draw their support for the MPP construction that is risky in so many aspects like environment, economy, health, and uh, cult, uh, local culture. So in this sense, I think the case of uh, French city Shinan has some limitation in demonstrating how conflict would have been actually settled. And also, um, I'm a bit uh, curious or skeptical about, so then how would you show that having conflict would have remedied all the problems you've mentioned in your paper, the presentation, uh, caused by not having conflicts. I noticed that you brought out the case of a, Shin, a French city, Shinin, uh, in order to uh, show the positive outcomes of conflicts. Yes, demonstrations of pressure from local residents did lead to more transparent and non-authoritarian um, MPP management system. So yes, you definitely did uh, provide it an uh, argument for an uh, argument that uh, Conflict in Korean case as well would have, could have uh, draw a better MPP management system. But then, what about uh, other problems or side effects that you have mentioned in your paper, such as impoverishment of local economies, indep independent capacity for development, or choice of uh, inappropriate geographic locations for MPP construction sites? So, like in other words, um, how would demonstrations or pressure from local residents? Uh, have prevented damage on local economy that is dependent upon its own culture. Isn't this damage something that tends to follow the MPP construction anyway since uh, its surrounding areas are often bound to the green belt? So in this sense, at least in the paper, the presentation, and even with the case of a French city, Shinan, uh, I feel like there's like more or less of lack of sufficient information or elaboration on how conflicts would have uh, prevented uh, degradation of local economy uh, in the uh, local context. And um, uh, my last last question is that, so you mentioned, so you said that Korean residents' uh, ex acceptance of MPP construction as a silent cooperation. So uh, could you please elaborate on how this silent cooperation you mentioned in your paper actually fulfills the criteria for cooperation because uh, my personal understanding of cooperation is uh, like more or less of active resistance or actually uh, performing like direct actions together for a common purpose. So Korean residents' passive acceptance of MPP construction uh, could 
like lie on a very fine line between cooperation and a mere compromise or to the extent of suppression as you've mentioned in your paper. So uh, I'll be really glad if I can hear some elaboration or clarification on these points. Thank you. Yes, um, yeah, I too also enjoyed your paper immensely. Uh, interestingly, my comments are very similar to what Ham Park uh, raised. And I would also like to say that I was very impressed by the field work that you conducted by yourself. And I would never have imagined that this paper was written by a physics major. So I think this is what makes it really interesting, the interdisciplinary approach to all these problems. Um, yes, as Ham mentioned, um, I w my first question is, how would you define conflict and cooperation in the context of NPP? Because I think the definition here is very important because the theme for this year is very counterintuitive. We need to really establish what conflict is and cooperation is in order to understand and define that one is preferable over the other. And I think what you did was you added adjectives a little too early. Maybe if you had just defined cooperation and conflict first, but then you dove straight into constrained cooperation and evaded conflict. So the reader is kind of confused. I mean, which, uh, if, if conflict was to be let alone, if it wasn't to be evaded, what would that look like? It was hard to uh, paint a picture of what the state of conflict for better outcomes, what would that look like in the context of MPP? And in the process of defi defining cooperation and conflict, I think maybe what you could do was like Miss Lindong Park did, maybe define the conflict between conflict between who? Maybe gov the conflict between the government and the general public, or the government and the local residents. Because in your paper, you present the survey results for both of those groups. And I think yeah, it's always important to persuade the reader that conflict is better than cooperation. Uh, on that note, yeah, exactly as she mentioned, the Shinon case, uh, you presented it as a solution, and I think. The label was very interesting, but I think you maybe tried to tell a big story with just one label. If you had dove into the details and about the measures that the government had taken, how, if conflict did occur, how did it prevail over cooperation? And what were the steps that the government took in order to enhance uh, transparency or resolve conflict? I think the details uh, were kind of missing in that point. Especially because you mentioned this case again in the conclusion, and I was expecting something more, something more meat to it, something that I could understand. Uh, my third uh, comment is, I'm very curious to know what was the puzzle and the motivation that uh, for this paper, because um, common sense dictates that perhaps this is somewhat obvious, but the government wants to build a power plant, and then the residents, they don't, they don't want it in their backyard. And then, yes, economic compensation is offered as an incentive, and that's sometimes uh the conflict and the opposition from the public. So for me, the research question that you raised, I think it, w it should have been a bit more clear as to what would this paper uh, contribute to the studies that are already in place in order uh, concerning the government policies and the reaction from the public. Um, yeah, for example, in your introduction, you say, unlike other developed countries, pro-nuclear policy isn't usually in Korea. I mean, that for me was very interesting, but there's no other mention of that in the rest of your paper. If you could maybe conduct a, you know, a comparative analysis of what was very specifically different in Korea and how that influenced, how which policy influenced the public opinion and so on. And uh, my last comment is, I would have liked to see a, much more footnotes in your paper because it was, I had a hard time finding, pinpointing the source of um, some opinions. And especially the terms such as credibility, acceptability, level of trust, cooperation, these are terms that are mostly from, uh, these are mostly government jargon, I think. I think that was a bit overwhelming. Um, like, if cred credibility were to, if Credibility is enhanced. If there is a high level of credibility, what would that look like? And what is acceptability different from cooperation? I mean, these terms were very confusing for me personally uh, throughout the paper. So, yeah, I think it's always, on a general note, I think it's always good to put as many footnotes as possible to identify the source and to make it make your paper more reader friendly. Thank you. I'm so here.
And um, if you if you like, you can respond to the questions. Uh, thank you for your comment, Ms. Park and Croc. And uh, I'd like to uh, say that uh, uh, the definition of cooperation and conflict in my uh, paper first. Uh, uh, actually, there are two kinds of conflict, uh, as uh, Ms. Kang uh, pointed. Uh, there are conflict between general public uh, versus government and uh, local residents versus uh, government. And uh, in the case that uh, government wants to build uh, more nuclear power plants or some kind of facilities uh, for nuclear public, uh, the local residents' uh, conflict uh, arises key issues. And uh, for uh, the cases like uh, after right after Fukushima, government conducts uh, survey on general public's uh, conception sentiments on the uh, nuclear power plant to uh, determine to uh, promote a nuclear power policy or not. And so in, in my, however in Korea, so, uh, there was um, largely neglected um, or on oral, on oral means on, on nuclear power plant in general uh, term. People was not, people were not very interested in that term that, that shows that, um, as I mentioned in the people, uh, paper, um, um, before the Fukushima accident, um, Joseon Ebo um, published only one article on uh, domestic nuclear issues uh, for one month. Uh, is uh, in now, um, we can easily see the uh, articles on nuclear problems uh, nowadays. But so that's and that's why there can be the answer for the uh, parks uh, question. That kind of silent cooperation. Uh, people was not uh, doing really actively uh, support the government on uh, nuclear power plant, but uh, at the survey or uh, even right after the Fukushima accident, the survey said that uh, we, uh, Koreans are uh, even more uh, cooperative than uh, other countries. If, even we are very close with Japan. So uh, it can be the uh, inter interpreted as a silent cooperation. I and I think I use uh, acceptability as a cooperation in mean, the same term. Uh, in uh, this issue uh, because uh, government uh, uh, every every decision of uh, government uh, on the nuclear plant carbon issue government uh, conducts uh, people's um, sentiment or some kind of acceptability uh, first and then they And then they um, reflect it into their uh, uh, policy. So uh, uh, people's acceptability uh, in their uh, people's answer to ISI accept that uh, the nuclear uh, that that policy means the cooperation in this term. So I use that. And finally, uh, uh, the conclusion was. Uh, the ship, uh, actually, I I I also know the um, uh, problems in my um, conclusion because I like to uh, do more research on the uh, French case. But I want to say uh, I, it is not uh, written in very detailed in my paper, but I want to uh, bring. Um, for a French case, because um, <coughs> uh, in French, um, um, under the 2006 reformation, uh, they published just um, some kind of um, article books uh, to the public, and everyone can um, get that 
uh, if we if they want and local representatives should have that and should read that one and the book doesn't have uh, only the nuclear promoters um, opinion they also bring some kind of conflict issues on that book and I I I've read them I I I I thought that it was um, kind of building transparency through uh, opening com uh, opening conflict issues to the public, uh, and uh, in uh, and again in Korea, uh, there's there are no uh, other um, some kind of um, public um, sentiment management policy in Korea except. Uh, SSP law I, I mentioned, um, and that covers only the residents. So that's <coughs> that's why I brought the Shinong's case. Shinong's case is uh, some kind of okay, founded in that um, uh, local Shinong local, but uh, in French, uh, uh, the French government uh, broadened it to some kind of local kinos and some kind of cultural kinos and make some, I, I want to stress that kind of um, point. You made an interesting point regarding uh, public attitudes toward the uh, NDPs. Uh, if you compare the Korean experiences to other countries, including Japan, uh, even um, after the instance of Fukushima, uh, Korean people, Korean public tends to believe that uh, NPPs are relatively um, you know, uh, safer than in other countries, and we need to have um, uh, NPPs in order to uh, you know, further economic uh, growth and so on and so forth. Well, in, in your paper, you know, she uses um, two uh, questions from the questionnaire to be able to measure public acceptability. One is about uh, how important it is to have NPPs, the necessity of NPPs. Number two, uh, the safety of NPPs. If you look at the survey, it is, it is you know, shocking to note that um, you know, throughout the 2000s, like uh, Korean public has a uh, uh, very strong support for the necessity of MPPs, as well as uh, strong belief on the safety of MPPs. Like 83% uh, 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 for the first question and 61% uh, for the second question as of 2009. But uh, you, it doesn't provide uh, information about what what happened after 2011, after uh, in the aftermath of Fukushima. But I assume that um, even though um, uh, the Korean people have a higher endorsement over NDPs uh, relative to other countries, if you look at uh, examine before and after Fukushima incident, you, you, you would notice uh, some differences. Can you tell us a little bit more about what kinds of differences you might have noted? Okay, uh, uh, I put on, on the survey research uh, through 2009 because uh, uh, Connect, Connect Park conducted this survey and they tried not to open uh, the resort to the public after Fukushima accident. So I could not gain uh, some kind of information about uh, from the Connect Park. However, I, I, F, uh, I, I got some kind of very, um, shocking uh, results from Gallup International right after the Fukushima and you know, only 2% point of uh, people were decreased. That said, I, 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 uh, uh, before, I th who said before, uh, I, I think I, I mm, changed my mind uh, due to the nuclear power plant, power plant after uh, this um, accident. The, the first question or second question? Is sensitive entities or safety of entities? The reduction of 2% for what question? First or second? Uh, it was that, uh, not necessary, not uh, safety, but so I... So trust for the NDPs only with a 2% of reduction of the public support after the Fukushima incident? Only 2% reduction? Yeah. That, that's surprising. Yeah, but so that's why, that's why we could do doing uh, we could promote uh, nuclear power plant policy even after the Fukushima accident. We, uh, but unlike other countries like uh, Germany or more, um, 
And however, uh, at that survey, because of um, some kind of large scale um, unawareness on nuclear power policy, so it could be happen. But I think we cannot see in it in the newspaper, but the um, changes are emerging now. In uh, especially, I uh, put Busan's issue very much because Busan, Busan is one of the largest city in Korea, but uh, one of the nearest city in Korea uh, in, to the nuclear power plant in Korea. So it is very natural that the change could begin from Busan area. So there was there were um, just like general public before the. Fukushima issue begins. They were they they they, they, they did not aware on this issue and they said yes I accept I, I will accept the power power plant in the survey. But after Fukushima, they um wanted to start to do some kind of new war in this uh, this process. Intriguing argument observation. Thank you. Now the floor is open. If you have any questions or inquiries, it's time. Tiny student from Seoul National University, majoring in Korean studies. And uh, thank you for your presentation and your comments first. Uh, here I've got a question for the first presenter. About Korean studies? Uh, no, I'm going to just say my question. I'm, I'm making a joke. Uh, <laughs> just go ahead. Actually, I'm really curious about the first presenter's major. I hope it's not only limited to Korean studies, right? <laughs> uh, because my question is about your fourth part in your uh, paper. You mentioned that uh, the importance of the model development, and you said the Korean model can also be implied to, uh, employed to uh, other uh, Asian countries who are going through the same uh, economic, educational, and political problems in their societies. As I'm from China, actually, I'm from Shanghai. Shanghai is a city uh, now is developing uh, very fast, although we're uh, still a developing country. So here, I'm really wondering, what do you think the experiences and lessons which China can learn from your career model? And also, if you are not that familiar with the Chinese model, uh, sorry, I mean the China society, maybe uh, you can give let me give us another example that how the Korean model can be employed to other Asian countries. Thank you very much. Okay, let's just collect more uh, questions. Um, it seems like uh, uh, you are a genuine expert. Uh, the, the question itself is very serious, uh, you know, treating you as a real expert on this issue. So you have a um, responsibility <laughs> to answer the question. Uh, other questions? Hello, I am uh, Kumar from India, and my question related to the nuclear power plant, uh, NPP. Uh, just I want to uh, say, like, uh, in 2012, it was uh, like a uh, Seoul nuclear summit, and uh, two agenda was really uh, hot there. The first is like a North Korea nuclear uh, program, and second is uh, how to use the non-reliable, uh, like uh, non global energy to prevent this all the nuclear plant. So in Korea, uh, the nuclear plant is really very developed. And Korea not only is a developed, but also helping to other countries. Let us suppose in India, the Korean government and Indian government have an alliance with the nuclear energy in 2012. So, so in Korea, there's a lot of talk about the security of regarding the nuclear. My first question, if the Korean people, are like Korean government, uh, like uh, especially the Korean people protest about the nuclear plan, then how they legitimize their own uh, plan to the other country? Means, let us suppose if you start closing here, then it's very difficult to other country to uh, start the plant there. So, and Korean economy is also very much based on the nuclear plant because it's like really getting a huge money. Another second question, in Korea, the, in the winter season, because of the south part of the South Korea, they close one nuclear plant. And because of that, there's a energy, uh, there's not enough energy to people use the all the heat 
uh, in the winter. So all the people start like, you have to make a minimum 20 degrees Celsius, not more than that, even the office in the university. So we people really directly affected because the Korea don't have the renewable source of energy. So nuclear plant is the only way to uh, come up with their uh, like need of the energy. So conflict with the people directly harming to other, how you explain that one? Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, let's collect about two more questions from the floor. Um, I have a question for the first presenter about the Korean model for conflict resolution. Um, first of all, thank you for a very interesting topic and I really enjoyed your presentation of paper. Um, so your answer to our topic, when is conflict better than cooperation? as for the Korean um, modern history was that conflicts um, brought out positive effects when there was cooperation and conciliation conflict resolution model in the Korean's case and specifically when where, um, there was development of media and interests of Korean public. Um, but I'm curious to know and curious to hear your answer about why was conflict a better choice so if, there, if we say that there, is a two, there are two choices, to evoke into conflict and to not to evoke into conflict, and that will include a lot of possibilities, but you, or maybe I didn't understand very well, but you didn't really mention why the conflict was inevitable and was a better choice under those circumstances. So um, if you could answer that question, I'll be really grateful. Thank you. Okay, if you're done, uh, I'm going to give um, presenters some time to respond, final response to the questions uh, from Pabunyang first. Thank you, for the, thank you for the questions. Um, I'll first respond to the questions made by Lady Beth here from Seoul National University. But first of all, it's relevant to my paper, but my main major is social psychology. So obviously I'm interested in all kinds of people, not only Koreans. But let's go back to the point. Um, well, you mentioned Shanghai, and I'd like to personally mention that I spent my last summer, not this summer, the summer of 2012 in Shanghai, a very beautiful city down there, um, or up there. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> I believe that Korean method cannot be directly applied to the China itself. Since China is a China is a huge society, like one fifth of all people in the world live in China. So I believe for Chinese society we have more complex model that can be found for different kinds of um conflict. Especially taking a look at the Chinese um economic politics and um society. It's quite similar to Korea in one perspective because we share common um, cultures, uh, East Asian cultures, while it, it's also very different from Korea because we have different political um, identity, we have different uh, social issues, we have different economic issues. So, however, uh, as we have constructed Korean models by taking a look at what kind of agenda and what kind of ideology that the Korean public took and the Korean government took um, in the process of the conflict, we can use the same process in Chinese conflicts that we, the Chinese society went through in the past, and also that the conflicts that is going on in the present days, and build on the Chinese conflict itself. So we may not be directly apply the Korean models made in here to the Korean Chinese society and its conflicts, but we can um, develop the ideas and the construction process, process of construction made in the Korean models to develop a new Chinese model that can be used in Chinese society. Uh, I hope that answers your question. And second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the lady at the front, uh, you have asked whether conflict was a better choice and whether conflict was inevitably that is correct. Um, but first of all, I believe in some of the cases that conflict was not really a choice. It can be a choice, but sometimes, uh, sometimes it's quite. Uh, but sometimes it's inevitable as a society because. Something conflict exists in itself, but the choice is whether or not the public choose to make it a social conflict and bring it on as a social agenda instead of um, 
So creating a conflict is quite inevitable because it happens when there's different sides, different classes of people in certain uh, with different perspectives. However, rather to bring it on as a conflict, social conflict, and bring on other public and the whole society as a conflict can be a choice. Uh, and I believe it is still a better choice if we have uh, constructed a very stable and uh, applicable mechanism for the resolution of such conflict. Because, um, as I have said, in and we have discussed in this paper as well, um, and as I have presented, a conflict has allowed the Korean society to show and identify, not only identify the conflict itself, but allowed for the generalization, generalization of the conf conflict resolution. And the important part is the resolution of the conflict itself. So avoiding the conflict can be uh, better in a short term because it brings in, uh, it prevents the violence, and it prevents the conflict, and it prevents the all uh, the avoidance of um, social conflict. However, it can still be a better choice as long as you have such better resolution because it can bring on the generalization of conflict resolution that can be used as for the development of Korean society in many other ways. Okay, thank you. Uh, for the first question, uh, I would like to introduce some Korean case, historical case. After a Chernobyl uh, accident, uh, every country is in the in, in on the earth or was slow, slowing down the nuclear power plant, and only Korea promoted uh, it. And it was uh, possible because every one was slowed down, and no um, demand for nuclear power plant were in, on the earth except Korea. So that's why Korea could buy nuclear power plant technology in very cheap uh, and in very cheap. So uh, I, I don't think if Korea has some kind of co uh, conflict in, uh, it is some kind of separate problem. But, but in Korea's uh, uh, specialty, uh, in Korea it is very, a little bit um, different from uh, American case because we we have uh, only prior and got um, Korean nuclear power plant is on, the only example or prior for the um, uh, out for to ensuring our technology, car safety or something some other things. So that's why we cannot. Uh, Close the uh, nuclear power plant, but think of, think of, think about more differently. If we have some kind of accident with our um, techno technical um, problem, um, then um, we cannot we, um, we we must be close on our thing. So I in the further uh, uh, thinking, I think uh, conflict make some kind of um, healthy uh, discourses on the uh, uh, on the on this issue, and it made um, it, it prevents some um, corruption and make, it can increase safety. And so I think um, it'll be more benefit than we bear uh, we ban the conflict. Uh, and in the second question, I think. Uh, I can answer in very similar ways. So. After you just get together and chat with each other. <laughs> <laughs> um, unfortunately, I'd love to, I'd love the discussion, let it let it flow, but uh, unfortunately time is up. Um, so the, thank you for presenters and uh, discussants, um, for wonderful provoking uh, uh, questions, and uh, thanks for the audience for uh, you know, listening to the wonderful discussion and raising uh, questions. Uh, let me close the first session right now. Thank you so much.